It's big and roomy, drives easy, and comes with a 4G data connection. Let's check the tech in the 2015 Buick LaCrosse. If it weren't for China, the Buick brand probably would not have survived GM's 2009 bankruptcy. But last year, GM sold 800,000 Buicks in China. That compares to 200,000 in the United States. So we wouldn't have the LaCrosse if it weren't for the Chinese market. Now the LaCrosse is Buick's full-size sedan. It's got a very high roof line and a big cabin. There's a lot of headroom and legroom inside. It's a very comfortable car. But it's not precisely a luxury car. It's actually front-wheel drive, which really isn't a luxury market thing. So what they call it is premium or near luxury. Now for 2015, they've added a head-up display, adaptive cruise control, and they've added the active safety seat, which buzzes your butt to warn you about things such as if there's traffic ahead that you're about to hit or cars in your blind spot. To the center stack, we have what they call Buick IntelliLink. And we've got this home button here, which brings up this is a basic home screen with these icons. We've got audio, phone, navigation, a settings icon, Pandora icon, weather, a text messaging thing if your phone works with this system, and an OnStar icon. My usual audio source is here. I'm actually on Bluetooth streaming, but I can also plug in my iPhone or a USB drive to a USB port in the center console. I can also switch to radio, and that'll get me FM, AM, and satellite radio. Navigation actually looks pretty good on this system. In 3D perspective, these, these maps look really good. There's a lot of nice detail. And if you're in a downtown area like the middle of San Francisco, you see all these buildings rendered too. There's traffic for your major roads, but there isn't a lot of traffic coverage. This doesn't have as extensive traffic coverage as I've seen on other cars. So that, that's a little strike against this system. I've also noticed that the system's a little bit sluggish. When I push the various icons, sometimes things don't happen right away and I have to push it a couple of times or it's just a little slow to work. The Pandora function will work if I have Pandora running on my phone and my phone is connected to the system. For weather, this actually comes through uh, satellite radio and here it's showing me the local weather for San Francisco in an hourly pattern. I can also switch it to a 36 hour or uh, a daily one which will give me a, a five day forecast. When I go to OnStar here, Actually, this is the real party trick of this car. This little cross is one of the first cars to come with a 4G data connection. That's, that's part of OnStar, and they use that to enable a Wi-Fi hotspot. So to test this Wi-Fi hotspot, I, I've got a Nexus 7 tablet here, and I've got a, a bandwidth uh, app here to tell me how fast this connection runs. Looks like it's actually an average speed of 12 megabits per second, so that's really fast. So you might wonder why you'd want a Wi-Fi hotspot in your car if most of your devices are connected uh, to LTE anyway. Well, it's good for tablets if you have wireless only tablets. And actually, the Wi-Fi connection in this car is gonna be have a little stronger signal than the one on your phone because this car has a more robust antenna. So you might get a connection further out than uh, when your phone might, might drop it. This car will actually have a connection for a longer amount of time. This IntelliLink system is pretty good, uh, a little sluggish on response, and I would actually like to see more apps on here too. And I would also like to see the 4G connection power more things in this system. I'm pretty comfortable in the cabin of this uh, Buick LaCrosse. It's very roomy. I've got a lot of elbow room, and if there was a passenger in the back, they'd have a, quite a bit of room too. It's, it's nice in here. Under the hood, we're running a uh, direct injection 3.6 liter V6. That does 304 horsepower, 264 pound feet of torque. Uh, direct injection is a pretty efficient technology. It means that it's mixing the fuel and air in the cylinder instead of in an intake manifold. And that leads to fuel economy of 18 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway. That highway number is pretty good, but the city number kind of kills you. My total average has been about 20. Uh, six speed automatic transmission. That's the only transmission you get with this car. It's not really a driver's car. It's, it's just very comfortable. This doesn't have an air suspension or anything like that, like a, a real luxury car would have, but Buick did a really good job of tuning the suspension for comfort. Now there is another engine available with this car. Uh, Buick does a 2.4 liter direct injection four cylinder. I've driven that one before. I like it actually, and that'll raise your fuel economy quite a bit. Uh, fuel economy on that model is 25 city, 36 highway. So you'll probably average about 30 with that. And that's a pretty big advantage over this. 
So we have adaptive cruise control. I can set that with the buttons on the steering wheel here, and a radar looking forward will slow this car down to the speed of slower traffic ahead. I've got blind spot monitors too, so that'll flash an icon in the side mirrors if there's a car in my blind spot. If I were to turn the signal on while a car was over there to give me a little warning about it, the active safety seat that this car has will actually buzz my butt. It also uses that for the forward collision alert. If I'm approaching uh, stop traffic or slow traffic too quickly, and the car thinks, you know, this could be a potential closing situation, but it'll also buzz me like that to give me a warning. Well, let's price out our 2015 Buick LaCrosse. The example we have here has the premium two trim level. So that puts the base price at $40,895. That also comes with the direct injection V6 engine. We add the driver confidence one and two packages that gets us adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, and that active safety seat. That adds $3,370 for a total of $44,265 for this car. Now, personally, I would actually scale it back. I would start with the mild hybrid version with that 2.4 liter four cylinder engine, up the fuel economy, and also save about $5,000 on the total price.